Um, I do want to just show you briefly how to uh, graph parametric equations on Inspire. Um, so what I'm going to do here is insert a graph page. And uh, this is, right now it's in function mode. If you press menu and you look at graph type, which maybe you've never done before, we can do function, parametric, polar, we'll talk about later, scatter plot, sequence, differential equations. So this one will be important for calculus. This one uh, I've never really done much with. Scatter plot, statistics type stuff, polar, soon we'll learn about that. Um, but parametric for now. And you can see that when you go to parametric mode, suddenly the variable that you need to graph with is t, so make sure you keep aware of that. Um, and you can see the default t value is actually from 0 to 2 pi. Um, so it's, it's as if they mean for you to be graphing uh, things with trig functions, I guess. Um, but anyway, I can, I can do uh, 3 minus 2t and uh, 5 plus, uh, let's say, 4t. And let's say t runs from, uh, well, let's say just from 0 to 1. T step, um, it's kind of important for, uh, the smaller it is, the longer it usually takes to graph. Uh, this did not take any time at all. Uh, I'm going to click and drag so that I can see the whole thing. Um, now what's lacking here is that it, it just graphs it all at once. Um, so you're seeing the path that is followed, but you're not actually seeing the, uh, you know, the, the particle or the object move along the path. We go to menu, um, trace, and then graph trace. So now you can get a sense, if I type in zero, which is a good idea, it forces it to be at zero. And then you can see uh, the T step here, 0 0.05, that's what I set it as. And so we can now watch uh, our cursor just kind of move. Uh, not really all that exciting, but you know, that those are the breaks. Um, so if I, that's one thing we can do. So, so remember, you always have to change your graph type it defaults to function because, you know, 99% of the time you're graphing functions. I could um, graph an ellipse. Let's do uh, 4 plus 2 sine of t and uh, 3 minus 5 cosine of t. And 0 to 2 pi, uh, I get my ellipse. And then what I can do is uh, trace. Trace, graph trace. You're always going to want to type in 0 right away. Um, so I can see that I'm actually starting down there at that vertex. And then as t increases, uh, I appear to be going counterclockwise. Um, so this is good. You can investigate. Uh, my window wasn't big enough, so it scaled when I got to the top. It's going to scale back down there. Um, anyway, uh, when you're tracing, make sure you, you, you can actually punch in values. I mean, I could punch in pi over 2. And it bounces there. I can punch in pi and then 3 pi over 2. Um, to get a sense of the, uh, you know, the direction in which you're traveling, the orientation of the curve. Um, and you can, you can graph more than one on a page. You can also graph a function at the same time. If I go to graph type, put function, uh, do I don't know, x plus 2. I can see that. Uh, I, don't, I doubt you can find intersections of these two, but let's try. Um, intersect, uh, graph 1 is that, graph 2, it's ignoring it, so yeah. Can't do that, but it does provide you the opportunity to, uh, you know, you can see where the intersections are. So once you've uh, worked out a different way of finding them, you can confirm them this way. But that's uh, graphing with parametrics on the Inspire, so I hope that's helpful.